Hi, my name's Dave, and in this video we'll be looking at financial instruments. More specifically, we'll be looking at accounting for an investment in a debt instrument using fair value accounting. In this case, the debt instrument in question is a five-year corporate bond issued on the 1st of July, X0. It has a face of $1 million and pays a fixed annual interest payment of 7% on the 30th of June each year. In this case, Sarah PLC purchased the bond on the issue date and paid $1,031,000 for it, as well as $5,000 in transaction costs. We're told the effective rate is 6.142% and that SARA elects to classify the bond as available for sale. This is important as it affects the way in which the bond is accounted for. The fair value of the bond on the 30th of June 2000X1 is given at $1,026,000. SARA then sells the bond on the 30th of June 2000X2 for $1,012,000 after receiving the coupon payment. This sale price is assumed to be at fair value. This example will focus on SARA's accounting for the bond. The first step is what to do for initial recognition. According to IAS 39 paragraph 43, when a financial asset or financial liability is recognized initially, an entity shall measure it at its fair value plus, in the case of a financial asset or financial liability not at fair value through profit or loss, transaction costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition or issue of the financial asset or financial liability. The key word in all of this is not. Available for sale financial assets are not the same category as financial assets or financial liabilities at fair value through profit or loss. As such, we do include the transaction costs into the initial measurement of the investment. Breaking it down, there are two elements which we need. The first is fair value, and in this case that is $1,031,000, and the second is the $5,000 of transaction costs. This means the total initially recognized is $1,036,000. As an entry, we end up with debit investment available for sale, $1,036,000, and we credit cash, $1,036,000. To determine how this bond gets accounted for after initial recognition, we turn to IAS 39 paragraph 46. After initial recognition, an entity shall measure financial assets, including derivatives that are assets, at their fair values without any deduction for transaction costs that may incur on the sale or other disposal, except for the following financial assets. And available for sale investments are not there. As such, fair values are used. So whilst we know we are adjusting this investment each year from fair value to fair value, how do we actually do this? IAS 39 paragraph 55 helps us out here. Specifically, a gain or loss arising from a change in the fair value of a financial asset or financial liability that is not part of a hedging relationship shall be recognized as follows. We look at part B. A gain or loss on an available for sale financial asset shall be recognized in other comprehensive income, except for impairment losses and foreign exchange gains and losses until the financial asset is derecognized. However, interest calculated using the effective interest method is recognized in profit or loss. So this means that A, changes for this instrument, which is accounted for as available for sale, go to OCI, and B, we need to continue to calculate the interest calculated using the effective interest method. With that in mind, let's have a look at how things work in Excel. The first thing that we need to do here is to determine the effective interest method amounts that we need um, as a basis for this. So even though this is a fair value accounting, the effective interest method still underlies some of what happens here. Um, so to set this up, we have the opening, we have the rate of 6.142%, which is the effective interest rate. Interest is the opening multiplied by what we have down here. Payment is the $70,000 annual coupon payment. 
the change is a working column just to show how much the opening balance has been adjusted in this case down and the closing is the opening minus the change there are other ways to do this this is just one I'd like to one way I like to do it um, and then we can just complete these by dragging them down and again if you've had a look at the other video where we go through this in detail that is out slightly it should be one million dollars and that's driven by the rate being rounded off to three decimal places in terms of the entries that we have so we've already done um, the initial purchase of the instrument so on the 30th of the 6th x0 we have debit cash how much they received we have debit investment available for sale sorry credit investment available for sale how much it's going down by and we have credit interest income and in that case it's the 63631 um, should say that is at x1 okay let's put down a little bit of extra information here 30 for the 6 x1 we have a fair value of 1026 and 30th of the 6 x2 we have a fair value of 10 12 0, 0, 0. So these are the fair values at the two balance sheet dates. We have, based purely on what we've done here with the effective interest method, we have a closing, and I'll call it sort of close, here of the opening amount minus what has been credited to that account. In that case, it's the ten. It's the one million twenty nine thousand six hundred thirty one. That is still higher than the fair value, and so we need to make an adjustment. And that adjustment is negative three thousand six hundred thirty one. And so to do that, we can see that will be a credit to the investment account of three thousand. 631 and that will be a debit to the AFS reserve in OCI of the same amount and we continue that process into the next year so 30th of the 6 x2 we still use the amounts from up here so when we do the, the cash, the payment amount, and the interest income, we still work it out using the effective interest method. So second line, the investment is being adjusted down by 6760, and the interest income is still 63240. So that's worked out the first set of entries for that second period of time. What we've ended up with is down here a fair value what would have been the opening because we've adjusted it down actually I can take it as this plus this so that gives you the the 1 million 26 minus how it's been adjusted of 6760 gives you 1 million 19,240 which you can see is larger than the fair value and so we make an adjustment again and in this case, we come down by 7,240. And we can just copy that set of entries down and just change the number that we need. And we end up with 7,240 being the adjustment to the AFS reserve and the investment account at the 30th of the 6th X2. We then sell the investment for 1 million and 12 debit cash equals 10 12 zero, 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 and we credit investment AFS 
And because of all the fair value adjustments, it's now been carried at $1,012,000. Um, It's also important to note what IAS 39 paragraph 55 says to do with the AFS reserve when the asset is derecognized. According to paragraph 55, at that time, the cumulative gain or loss previously recognized in other comprehensive income shall be reclassified from equity to profit or loss as a reclassification adjustment. So taking that on board, let's get back into the worksheet. What we now do is to reclassify um, from equity to profit or loss um, the cumulative amounts in, in OCI or the AFS reserve. This is sometimes called recycling. So the way we can do this is we credit AFS reserve and the amount that we credited is just looking through and just whatever we've debited to the AFS reserve here is 10,871 so we'll be debiting something 10,871 and what we're debiting is a loss on sale investments investment and that is recycling or reclassifying the AFS reserve from equity to profit or loss And that covers accounting for an investment in a debt instrument using fair value accounting.